My next guest is a writer and producer whose powerful storytelling has helped to shape some of the most innovative shows on TV. His fearless portfolio includes work on The Boondocks, Everybody Hates Chris, Marvel's Runaways, and American Gods on Stars, just to name a few. Well, this creative genius has a new project, and it's one that combines the supernatural with some serious soul power. That's right, Jack. The 1970s film Blackula is making a comeback, and this time is going to be a graphic novel. I am so excited about this. So here with a lowdown on the adaptation of Blackula and more is the mastermind himself, TV writer and producer Rodney Barnes. Welcome to Black News Tonight. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, for those that are too young to remember Blackula, I'm going to go ahead and throw myself in that category. <laughs> go ahead and tell us why he is returning to this area of a pandemic and Black Lives Matter. Well, you know, folks like Jordan Peele and a lot of other creatives and shows like Lovecraft Country have sort of opened the door for um, quality African-American horror-filled stories. And I loved Blackula when I was a kid. My mother took me to see Blackula and scream Blackula scream when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> and I never forgot it. I never forgot it. And as I got older and I revisited the movie, I saw all of the problematic stuff that I didn't see when I was a kid. You know, when Blackula became a vampire, his lapels got bigger and his afro got bigger and the sideburns came out. And, you know, it was more of a play on his ethnicity, more so than it was on him being a vampire. And when I started to, you know, get into this thing of publishing and graphic novels, I said if I ever got the opportunity, I would revisit Blackula and try to take some of that stuff out and bring him into a modern day. And that's what I've done. And along with artist Jason Sean Alexander, we are retelling the story of Blackula and bringing him into a new world and hopefully uh, to a new audience. And I hear you were probably seeing a lot of these black exploitation movies a little too young and you were going into some of these movies because <laughs> you were tall. People oh, didn't, yeah. didn't oh, encourage you to go ahead in. <laughs> so how did these movies... No, back then, no one cared. Nobody cared. I've been like six feet yeah, since I was like five years old, I've been six feet tall. So no one, it was like a, a, a big child just walking in and just go on in. I saw Shaft, all of those movies. Oh, see. So, and yeah. so you grew up on a lot of these. How did those old school movies, and especially Blackula, really influence your creativity and your writing style that you're still using to this day? I think the thing about black exploitation, even with its problematic elements, um, it was one of the first times that black people were prominently on the screen when the story was about aspects of the culture. Uh, you could see the influence of the dominant culture coming in and, um, you know, sort of playing and tinkering with the story. But the actors that portrayed a lot of those characters were stellar actors, and they did the most that they could with what they were given. And that was what came through. And that influenced me to where now we have a different day where we have more control over the way stories are told and more influence in regards to how stories are distributed uh, to our culture. And so now, you know, being able to look at characters like Dracula and uh, other prominent, you know, horror characters over history, uh, I want to bring Blackula up. I want to bring him up <laughs> to a degree of class and elegance and um, horror. Mm, well, I can't wait for that because you've done some amazing work in TV, but you've also had a huge impact on the comic industry. So tell us a little bit more about your company, Zombie Love Studios. Yeah, Zombie Love Studios uh, sort of follows that same mandate of what I'm trying to do with Blackula. Stories of horror, mystery, supernatural, uh, really quality storytelling in the graphic novel space with the best artists and the best writers and really trying to spearhead a 21st century movement of just really great storytelling that does service, uh, a great service to our culture. Um, I already have a book, uh, Philadelphia, with artist Jason Sean Alexander. We've been Eisner nominated, that's sort of the uh, Emmys of the comic book world. Mm -hmm. And we're expanding that world as well, and it's a vampire-themed uh, story as well. And we hope to just continue to expand and tell stories of the supernatural and macabre and keep people entertained and hopefully um, 
bring some quality storytelling to the culture. So I'm curious, do you have a favorite graphic novel or comic book character of all time? I, I'm going to say Swamp Thing. I get asked that question a lot. Um, Swamp Thing sort of has a superhero thing along with a horror thing. I've been reading comic books my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing that I probably read, my mother was a school teacher and she used to take me to the public library. And they always had a box in the corner of comic books. And that's where I would immediately go. And I read everything, Marvel, DC, anything that they had, but I never saw us, and or very rarely. Mm -hmm. And so I gravitated to mainstream characters, like I said, Swamp Thing, Batman, Superman, and, and, and the like. But Swamp Thing was sort of a horror character and a superhero as well. That would be my favorite character. And I think they recently tried to bring that back like on the CW or something as a series. So you may have to work on that next and start writing for them. But as a that writer, would be nice. that I would know, be right? But as a writer, you have achieved yeah. so much success in all the amazing shows that you have worked on that we still watch today. And a lot of times we only hear about the success stories and the hardships that actors go through. Oh, and I was doing this when I was an actor, I had to go through this. But you too had to go through a lot of hardships as you worked your way up the entertainment ladder, if you will. Can you give us a little glimpse of your journey? Oh yeah, um, Damon Wayans. I was a production assistant and um, I met Damon Wayans on a movie, Major Pain. <laughs> and he sort of inspired me to move from Maryland. I, I'm from Annapolis, Maryland. I moved to L.A. I lived in my car for about a year and I just kept knocking on doors until an opportunity um, came about, ironically, with Damon again on my wife and kids. And he hired me for one day as a punch up writer. You know, you just come in to give some jokes and I just wouldn't go home. I just every day would keep coming <laughs> back and coming back and coming back until this was before 9-11 when you could get on a studio lot. Um, and Eventually, they just gave me a job as a staff writer, and that was the beginning of my career. And from there, it was Everybody Hates Chris and the Boondocks. And that sort of um, launched my career. But, you know, it was raw talent. It took a long time for and a lot of great folks uh, that I worked under to teach me and mold me. It's not just the writing part. There's a, lot, there's a uh, psychological component to learning how to work in Hollywood, mm -hmm. the pressures of working in Hollywood. I was unfamiliar with all of that stuff. And, you know, by the grace of God, and like I said, some really talented folks who took interest in me. Um, well, you you know, know I can't you... tell you how many times I uh, pulled my coat to a myriad of uh, ways to go about Ooh. dealing with folks. Mm. And um, fortunately, I'm still here doing it. Well, you know you love what you do if you can live in your car and do it. So before you go, we only have a few seconds left. You got to let us know, when will Black Ula be available? Blackula will be available April of next year. Uh, we'll start to see teasers and stuff on Instagram and social media and all over the place and um, hopefully more interviews like this and um, really excited about it. Well, when it comes out, you got to come back and talk about it and also all the other projects you're working on. Thank you so much for joining us.